In this video, we'll learn how to navigate around and find the things that we're looking for inside of Mari's user interface. All right, great. So now that we have our first project created here, let's take just a moment or two to sort of explore Mari's user interface and talk about some of the differences between Mari and ZBrush. So what we're looking at here is the interface for Mari when we have a project open. Remember, all of the projects inside of Mari are stored over here on the Projects tab. So you can see here, there is a new project right here called WWOLF, which is the one we created in the previous video. Now again, we have a number of tabs across the top here. And typically, when I'm painting inside of Mari, I'm going to be working in this orthographic view. So the orthographic view is one in which we don't have any kind of perspective distortion. Uh, so what we're looking at here may seem a little bit odd looking uh, if you're used to looking at something um, with sort of perspective. But we do also have a perspective view here that we can load up as well. Now it may take just a moment to load this up, but you can see here what this looks like when we're looking at this through a perspective camera. Now we have some controls over here uh, with the near and the far clipping planes and the field of view right up here. Uh, now typically I will not be working inside the perspective view. I've just become accustomed to working inside of Mari's orthographic view. And uh, you can really paint in either view, whichever you'd prefer. Now one thing we also have access to is a split orthographic UV view right here. And again, what we're looking at here in this area of the UI is called the canvas. Uh, so just like in ZBrush, this area is called the canvas. I've also heard it referred to as a viewport, but the official terminology is that is Mari's canvas. And these tabs change what we're looking at here. So if we went to a split orthographic UV view, what we'll find loads up here, as you can see the orthographic view loads up here on the left. Uh, we can move around and navigate. And then we have over on the right our UV view. And we could work back and forth between the two. We can also grab this little divider in the center and drag that either way if we want a little bit more room in one of the two views. So let's talk a little bit about navigation here inside of Mari. Uh, now navigation inside of Mari is very similar to what I'm used to from an application like Maya. Uh, now it is very different from ZBrush. So let's talk a little bit about how this works right out of the box. So everything is going to work with the Alt key as sort of a modifier. If we hold down Alt and click away from our model and just drag, you'll see we're tumbling around and we can use the pivot wherever we click. So if we wanted to tumble based on a pivot here, we could click on that. And if we wanted to do the same for his head, we could click and use that as sort of the pivot there. So uh, again, that's Alt and left clicking will do this for you. Now, if we were to Alt and right click, what you'll see here is we can zoom in and out, just like so. And then Alt and middle click will pan around just like so. Now I'm using uh, a stylus and a tablet right now. And for me, I prefer mapping the buttons on my stylus. I have two buttons on my Wacom Cintiqs stylus here. And I prefer to map one of those to right click and one of those to middle click. So I can toggle back and forth and use those in terms of orbiting around my mesh here. Now there is one other keyboard shortcut to keep in mind. You can actually hold down the control and the R key and that will allow you to rotate the camera. So we can come in and rotate just like so. All right, great. Now there are some navigation presets. If we were to come up here to edit preferences, open up the Mari preference dialog. And if we were to come over here to navigation, you'll see here that the control type by default is set to Mari. But if you're used to navigation in another application, you can come down here and actually change the way the navigation works to match that other application. Unfortunately, ZBrush is not currently an option here inside of this list, but um, if you have one of these other applications and you're used to navigation there, you can absolutely switch the control type inside of Mari's preferences. Okay, great. So now that we know about the canvas and the different ways that we can view the canvas here using these tabs across the top, let's talk about the things that we see around the canvas. 
Now, whereas in ZBrush, what you're looking at at the very top are several menus that open up basically palettes. Inside of Mari, this is going to be called the menu bar, and these are pretty standard menus. So we have a lot of filters in here that we could launch. We have uh, basically menus that uh, are appropriately titled based on the name of the menu. Now, below that, this area right here, these are toolbars. So we have a number of different toolbars inside of Mari. And the way you can spot these toolbars, if you look over here to the far left of my screen, there's two small perforated lines. And uh, that is on the edge of the toolbar. And what we can actually do is we can actually grab that toolbar by those little perforations and we can move it around and redock it. Now that one wants to be a little bit difficult, but let me grab a different one here. There we go. And you can see I can drag and drop that toolbar that was on the left hand side of the UI right up here. So let me just move that back to its previous location and drop it into place. Fantastic. So we have toolbars. Uh, now the other windows we see on the left and on the right, these are called palettes. Uh, just like ZBrush has palettes, Mari also has palettes. Now these palettes function a little differently than the palettes inside of ZBrush. You can actually come over here to the view menu like we saw in the previous video and then down to palettes and you can see all of the palettes that are available to us. The ones with orange icons are currently open while the gray icons are currently not open. So let's look at this objects palette over here. Um, we have the ability to customize the position of this just like with the toolbars simply by grabbing this little gray gradient bar at the top and dragging that palette around. Maybe we wanted to drag it over to here and redock it. And you can see there's a little dotted line that appears over areas that a palette can be docked to. Now we also have some buttons here. This will launch the Mari Help website anytime you see that question mark on a palette. Uh, and you'll be able to get more information about that palette. Uh, we have this little button which will roll up a palette. However, it does look like I drug the palette away from its docked location. Let me go ahead and do this again. This little button here will roll up the palette just like so. This little uh, button right here will undock the palette. So if we wanted to float it out into the UI just like so. And then, of course, the X will close the palette out. I'm going to go ahead and dock that back in right over here. So basically, the majority of Mari's user interface is going to be either palettes or toolbars. Now, we have a number of toolbars here across the top, the left-hand side, and even across the bottom of the user interface. Now, a quick way to easily access these toolbars is to just simply right-click up here on one of the toolbars. If we do that, you'll see this menu pops up here. Now, right now, this is showing us all of the palettes above this line right here. And then below that line, these are our toolbars. So we can come in here and we can actually turn off toolbars that we might not be needing. For example, uh, if we wanted to turn off maybe the, oh, I don't know, let's turn off the color space toolbar. Watch the toolbar at the bottom of my screen you can see that toolbar disappears. And we can always come back and turn that back on if we need access to that. So uh, while you can access the palettes here under the view menu, you'll notice that the toolbars are not available. You'll need to come over here and just simply right click to access those over here. Now when you start to arrange multiple palettes on top of each other, like we have here, you'll start to notice these tabs appear. So this is the channels palette and we also have a tab here for the image manager palette and then the shaders and then the shelf. So it is possible to stack palettes on top of one another right here. Now one thing that you might find useful and you might want to explore in between videos is that Mari has the ability to customize the user interface. We can actually come up here to the view menu and we can save a layout configuration and then we can come in and load that configuration at any time. If you ever want to reset Mari's user interface back to its default state, all you need to do is select this default layout button and that will reset all of your toolbars and your palettes. All right, fantastic. With that said, in this video we've learned about navigation inside of Mari and we've also learned about the user interface. Let's go ahead and move on to our next video and talk a little bit more about channels and layers.